Welcome to Church on the Rise. It is our hope that you are encouraged, enriched and enlarged as you listen to this week's message. You know, just as Les was sharing just then, I just had this just come to me again and that thought is this and I just believe there's somebody here that needs to hear this today that Jesus changes people and he changes them a lot. I don't know what you're facing. Uh, maybe, maybe you've just recently encountered Jesus. Maybe you're going through something, but and you look at the situation and the circumstance and you wonder. Uh, I want to tell you today, Jesus changes people and he changes them a lot. And you're sitting in a room, you missed a good opportunity, amen. You're sitting in a room full of people that Jesus has changed. And he's changed them a lot. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be in a room with you people. That was a little bit harsh, but let's be honest. A few of us might be at the pub together. I don't know. I don't know where we'd be. But if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here this morning. And so I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the the ins and outs and the intricacies of your life and your heart. But Jesus does. And Jesus changes people. And he changes them a lot. I think uh, maybe I might have to share, uh, we might have to do some testimony time uh, up in this church some stage again soon. And uh, just Jesus changes people. And not 2,000 years ago, today, today. And he sees you and he knows you. And he's looking to do something wonderful in your life to show off. But uh, for those of you who are new, my name's Michael, and it's my privilege with my wife, Kelly, who's out and kids, to, uh, to serve here at Church on the Rise. And we just hope that you just have a fantastic time with us today and experience something of the, the life-changing power of our God. This week, as I spent time with God around what I felt He was wanting to share, I, I had to dig a little bit deeper than, than I normally do. Uh, oftentimes I've got about 10 or so different things floating around in my spirit and I'm saying, oh, you know, which, which, which one? But I kind of came with a blank canvas this week and, and there, there, there is always any, anything great that I could have shared, but I just felt I had to dig a little bit deeper to drill down exactly what God has for us this morning. And I believe that it's really important for me to share again with you today that every week I wait on the now word, of God for us as a church. Now, that's not like, I oh, thank you, Michael. I mean, you, you don't pay me to do that, but that's the responsibility that God's put on me to do. But, but I share it to say this, that every time we share a word, every time that we preach, it's more than just the general word of God that's good for us all, but I believe that it's the specific word of God for us all now today. And because of that, it's always going to have this prophetic edge to it. That somehow that, how did Mike know that I needed that? Well, Mike didn't, but God did, and God does. Because we could open the Word of God on any page at any given time, and it's all good, amen? It's all timeless. It's always life-giving. But I believe that there is a now Word of God for us today. And it's important for you to know that because it means the difference between God's Word to us in a general sense and God's Word to us in a specific sense. That He sees you, that He knows you, and that He cares. And that He sends His Word to equip us for where we are now. And He knows what our tomorrow is going to hold. And so He's wanting to strengthen us and equip us for where He's leading us into tomorrow. And this knowledge should help, help us to lift our expectation, to lean in just that little bit more because this is the Word of God for me. This is the Word of God for you. It should cause us to stir our, our faith because we all need what He has for us right now. Amen? And if we ever get to a point in our lives where we think we don't need him right now can i suggest that maybe we're living far below where god would have us be because god calls us out into open spaces to open places where we go god if you don't come through i'm going to sink he calls us to step out on the water god if you're not with me i can't do it 
So we all should be in desperate need of God's now word for us, to equip us, to empower us, to bring us on. Who's ready for the word this morning? Who's ready to be lifted, to be challenged? I encourage us today, let's start today's meeting where we finished off last week, free and expectant. We're going to take our main reading this morning from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going to the temple courts. When he saw Peter and and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God when God touches your life no one has to tell you how to praise him it's a natural response when all the people saw him walking and praising God they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement is what at what had happened to him. Amen. I want to talk with you today on the thought, what I do have. When you turn to your neighbor and ask them, what do you have? What do you got? What do you have? What do you got in your pocket? You got any silver or gold? What I do have. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's living and active. It's not just words on a page. It's you, Jesus. It's life. Has the power to change us. So we position ourselves as best as we can with a posture of openness. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. You don't go where you're not invited. You don't go where you're not wanted. So this morning... We say, Holy Spirit, come. Lead us into truth. It's who you are. You're the great illuminator. That you would show us things that maybe we didn't know before. That you've come today into this place, into this space, to set captives free. To release bondages, weights. We pray, Lord God, that we might see as you see, that we might hear that which you're saying that your word might come and find good soil in our hearts and then you might change us and change us a lot and let it be to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Peter turned to the crippled man. He said, silver and gold, I don't have. But what I, I do have, what I've got, That I give to you. We live in a world where there seems to be more time and value placed upon appearance. As you can tell, I spend a lot of time. That's why I look so good. (laughs) Saying's all. God can take the credit. I didn't make me. He's a clever God, isn't he? He's He's a good God. So talented. So talented. Anyway, I was going to go somewhere else. Keep focused. Where we seem to focus on appearance and and, and how we try to portray a great life rather than focusing on building a great life in Him. 
we seem to be so focused on the peripheral rather than focusing on living a life of, of substance. It seems to be more valuable to people nowadays to look good rather than in actuality being good or living a great life. Why don't you turn your eyes to the screens? My name's Jeff, and I'm an Instagram husband. I find every cute girl on Instagram is a guy like me and a brick wall. My name's Trey, I'm an Instagram husband. I've had to delete all of the apps off my phone just to make more room for more photos. Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm an Instagram husband. I love my life so much. My job in pictures is to make her look good. I want you to just take a picture like, like higher, no higher, higher, higher. Babe, higher. I'm basically a human selfie stick. Go. Last year for Christmas, I actually got her a selfie stick. And then she got mad at me because she thought I was just trying to get out of taking photos. Of course, I'm trying to photo. What are you doing in here? Taking a picture of all your stuff? Yeah, this is a good moment. I support that. Oh, wait, just a second. I should probably comment on this. It helps me out if I'm the first one to comment. Cute. It's become a pretty big problem. Um, we take so long to get anywhere because we're taking pictures of our feet. Oh, shoe pick, shoe pick. No, this one's better. No, no, stop, stop. Move your foot. Okay, can we hold hands? One more, one more. I like this leaf right here. Yeah, we used to eat our food. Now we just take pictures of it. No! You can't do that! I haven't taken a shot of that yet! God, we have to show everybody how much we enjoy our lives together. Yeah, it's really enjoyable. If you or someone you know is an Instagram husband, help is out there. Go to InstagramHusband.com and see how millions of men just like you have found hope. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. Babe. Find help today at InstagramHusband.com. funny because we know it's true <laughs> you know for so many this is a reality and for a lot more of us if we were to be honest is it, it is at least in part symptomatic of a loss of priority and centeredness in reality and in substance we had sh we've shifted from the center from substance from worth and moved to the circumference to the peripheral to appearance and the impact is not lost on our souls or on the world in which Jesus is sending us into how disappointing is it to have believed in something or someone only to find out it was all smoke and mirrors it was all fake it was a facade they were phony it wasn't real they posed as being real, it posed as being significant, but it wasn't. It was empty and void. This is the story of the Wizard of Oz, right? There's four journeymen, four unlikely characters set out towards a man, towards a wizard who promised something. And people were led to believe that he had something of substance to offer, when in fact he did not, he could not. He was a fake, he was a phony, he was a charlatan. It was the Apostle Paul who, who warned Timothy of these types of people. He says they, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They, they look like it, they sound like it, but they've got nothing. They're, they're empty and void. It was King Solomon 
who said uh, these people, they're, they're like clouds that give no rain. You, you look and you think they're going to give rain, but they don't. These men are like ones that promise gifts but never deliver. Their words are empty and they can't offer anything except an illusion. They are vessels that don't carry substance. It was Jesus who spoke to this very issue in Luke chapter 6, verse 43. Jesus said, no, good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs or thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good that he has stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. No matter what we have, good or bad, it's out of that that we speak. It's out of that that we give. It's out of that place that we live. It's not out of who we hope to be. It's not out of who we project to be, out of who we'd like others to think that we are, that we give. No, it's out of the heart that we give. For the good man gives good things out of the good that he has stored up. He's done something to see that there's good inside of him to be able to give from. Peter had something to give, something that was so much more significant and of so much more value than silver and gold. He gave out of his relationship with God. He he gave out of his experience with Jesus. He gave out of his encounter with Holy Spirit. Church, we can't give out of what we don't have. Good intentions don't help people. Amen? A good man gives out of the good that's stored up. I wonder today, what do you have? What have, what have you got stored up? I wonder today if you left and it wasn't Peter and, and, and John. It was Peter and you. And a crippled man looked to you. I wonder, what could you give? I wonder what we've got stored up. I'd, I'd like to think that there was something within me to give to this person. But I wonder today, what have you got stored up that you could give? I wonder what your, what I do have would be. What do you have? We are living in the greatest time in church history where we as born-again children of God have the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. And He's not diminished in me because He lives in you. We have the greatest opportunity as the church, as the Holy Spirit is no longer, as we saw in the Old Testament, just dished out at certain points in time for particular things. But no, he said, Jesus said, it's better that I go so Holy Spirit can come. And not in a general sense, but for those of us that cry out, for those of us that have been redeemed and said, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to be filled with the power and the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit. And yes, this incredible gift is bestowed upon us as we receive Him in an initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you're here today and you've never been prayed for to be baptized with the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit, we want to pray for you at the end of today's meeting. But for those of us that have, as we've received Him at a point in time, at a point in history that we can remember that back there, it was back there where the Holy Spirit filled me and I was baptized and filled with Him afresh But of something to tell you, church, it doesn't end there. It only begins there. I'm so glad that when I was younger 
And I went to mum and said, mum, I'm hungry. That she didn't turn to me and say, what's wrong with you? I fed you yesterday. It's lunchtime and I fed you at breakfast. How much food do you need? So glad that mum continued to feed me every time that I was hungry because I need sustenance. I need sustenance to provide energy to be able to do the task to keep me going. I need fuel. And just like food is to our body, Holy Spirit is to our souls and our spirit. Yes, I received you once, but that was yesterday. There's something on our roof. Yes, we received you once, but that was yesterday. And sometimes you might not be aware of it, but your husband or wife or child might be aware of it, that you're in desperate need of the Holy Spirit again. To be filled, to be touched with His presence and His goodness and His mercy. He equips, He empowers, He enables us to live the new life that we have in and through Jesus. Holy Spirit is our substance. Holy Spirit is our sustenance, our energy and our fuel. We need Him not only once, but always and ever. That yes, I partook of Him yesterday, but I desperately need Him this morning. I wonder what do you have when it comes to the crippled situations in our lives and in the lives of others that we walk past? What do you have? We live in a crippled world where people are looking at us and hoping that we would fix our eyes on them and say, look at me. Because we have something to give. Something beyond finances. I mean, sure, we need to do that. We've spoken about that at the start of the year with our missions giving. We need to give. We need to look after the practical needs of our brothers and sisters. What this man needed was a miracle. What this man needed was something that was beyond human resource. This man needed something that was supernatural. I wonder as we journey out into our worlds, what do we have that we can give to the crippled people in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces. What do you have? Are you full of the Spirit? I know many of us have been told at different times in our lives that we're full of something, but are you full of Him? Because we can only give out of what we have. We can only give out of who we are. What I do have. What good have you stored up? Just like we hunger for food, do we hunger for the Holy Spirit? Because He doesn't fill the empty, He only fills the hungry. You hear that this morning? He doesn't fill the empty. He only and always fills the hungry. He's not looking down over us as a church this morning and and going, empty, filled, empty, filled, and you just, oh, I haven't topped up again. He doesn't fill the empty. The empty is not what qualifies God to fill you. It's hunger. It's the hungry who are filled. Jesus said, blessed are those who, who are empty. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they will be filled. He doesn't fill the empty, he fills the hungry. Then Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and the one who knocks the door will be opened. 
Which of you fathers, if a son asks for fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? It's not the empty church. It's the hungry. It's those who seek. It's those who knock. It's those who ask. To those He will give of His Spirit. And not just as a once-off, but a day after day after day after day after week after month after year. The good man out of the what he has stored up gives out silver and gold I, I don't have but what I, I do have Jesus is looking for a church that knows what it is to hunger and thirst that knows what it is to seek to knock and to, to ask to be filled with the power of heaven our crippled world needs something that's beyond just human resource they need people that are filled with the power of heaven, that have something to give them that changes their situation and changes it a lot. They need the Holy Spirit through us, people to be filled with the power. He doesn't fill the empty. He only and always fills the hungry. How much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask is there anybody asking here today for more of the Holy Spirit is there anybody here in desperate need of the Holy Spirit I think too often sadly if we were to be honest our stories of Holy Spirit's involvement in our life often have a date that goes far back what the Holy Spirit did somewhere back then oh that was amazing I prayed for this person and you should Sadly, for too many of us, we don't have any recent accounts of what Holy Spirit has done in us and through us. And can I suggest to you, the Holy Spirit hasn't diminished in power. So I wonder, do we hunger and thirst? I wonder, are we storing up good? Do we have something to give beyond just good intent? Do we have something to give beyond just Jesus loves you and a pat on the head do we have some good stored up in us so that when we walk past the crippled and the broken and the hurting and the desolate and the distanced from God do we have something of which to offer them beyond ourselves I mean you're good but Holy Spirit is better have you stored up have you have you stored him up and we need to move beyond an acknowledgement that we are at times empty and seek after Him so that we have the substance. So we have Holy Spirit who changes everything. What I do have, it's only what I do have. Not what I once had, not what is promised, not what's in you, what I do have out of that that I give we see so clearly in the book of Acts that the difference between a weak and a fearful church and a bold alive strong moving God honoring lives being changed people being born again church is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit a church that knew what it was to get alone and shut the door and wait and wait and wait till Holy Spirit came and filled and then they went out and then they waited and then they waited and they got filled again and, and then they went out the difference between a weak church and a strong church is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit I wonder what do you have do you have anything stored up in you that can help you your situation and the crippled around about you As we wrap this up this morning and invite the worship team to, to come, I, I want to read to you a parable that Jesus told about the ten virgins. Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 1. 
At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and, and five were wise. The foolish one took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and go buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready with him, who were ready, went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. All throughout the Bible, oil is, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus in this story makes a credible, an incredible distinction between the foolish and the wise. Between those who have oil and those who don't have enough. Church, I wonder this morning, have you got any oil? Here's the thing. Can't give you my oil. You've got to go get your own. I can't give you my oil because I dug for it. I sought him for it. I asked him for it. I waited on him for it. It's my oil. I can't give you my oil. You've got to go get your own. It's there for you. But what I can give you what I can share with you is the light that my oil produces. Peter didn't give the crippled man his oil. He gave him his light. The light that the Holy Spirit produces in us when we're full of Him. The, the, the five wise virgins had enough oil for their lamp to shine. I wonder if we've got enough oil, church, in us to shine or have we slightly dulled a little bit? And I think if we'd all be honest, some of us have. Maybe you're shining brightly, but maybe the person next to you, not so much. And it's got nothing to do with our, our love necessarily for God. It's got nothing to do with attending a service. It's got, it's got nothing to do with generosity and giving. It's got nothing to do with serving. It's just got everything to do with waiting. Because being empty doesn't qualify you to be filled. He doesn't go empty filled, empty filled, empty filled. It's, he only feels the hungry. He only feels the hungry. He only feels those who position themselves to receive of Him. He only feels those who know what it is to get into a room and shut the door from all the noise, to walk away from all the chaos, to walk away from distraction, to walk away from other things that pull at our thoughts, at our emotions, at our time, at, things that demand that that should be of priority to us, that we can shut the door on that and wait on, on Holy Spirit to come and fill us afresh. I pray that God would cause a dissatisfaction inside our hearts this morning, that we'd be dissatisfied with the stories of old. And, and, and I wonder, I wonder today if, if there was some good stored up maybe next week as we gather together there would be some stories of what Holy Spirit did this week through lives in this place I, I, I wonder I just, I, just, I just wonder I just think maybe Holy Spirit's just a little bit more eager to move through our lives and we give him the opportunity to do so
Why don't you stand your feet this morning as we come real close? I wonder today if you, like me, have allowed the demands of life, have allowed the selfish desire to seek ease and comfort over Him. And as a result, it's caused our lamps just to shine just a little duller. And today, you'd want to, with me, in this place, not move past this opportunity, this space that we have, to wait on Him, to cry out to Him afresh and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to fill me. Yes, I ate yesterday. Yes, I ate a month. Oh, but I need you today. I, I need you today. I'm hungry. I need fuel. I need substance. I need sustenance. I, I need your Holy Spirit. If that's you here today, I, I just encourage you with me just to raise your hands. Raise your hands toward heaven. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Begin to open your mouth. Just tell him that you need him. Holy Spirit, would you come again? As we all over this place. Hands raised as we, we need your Holy Spirit. But Jesus, you didn't just save us and say, hey, good luck, guys. Off you go now. You said, no, you've got, but you've got to wait. You, you've, got, you've got to wait. You've got to wait for Holy Spirit to fill you so you're empowered to do that which I've called you to. Don't go without Him. Go with Him. Come on, begin to call out to Him. Begin to cry out to Him. Begin to wait upon Him. Holy Spirit, we need You. Let Your fire fall in this place. Lift Your hands towards heaven. Holy Spirit, we need You. We're in desperate need of You. We want You. Holy Spirit, You don't go where You're not invited. So this morning we say, come. Come as only You can. Let Your fire fall. Your fire only falls on prepared altars. So we position ourselves. We posture ourselves. And we say, Holy Spirit, come and fill Your church. Holy Spirit, come and fill your church. Come and breathe upon us today. Come and breathe into our lives. Come and breathe into our situation. Come and breathe into our soul. Come and breathe into our spirit. Let your fire fall this morning. Let your fire fall this morning. God, that there would be such a desire in our hearts that we would hunger, that we would thirst, that we would seek, that we would ask, that we would knock. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Holy Spirit. fire fall. Let your fire fall in this place. Stir our hearts again, Lord God, for those of us that are settled for something less than your very best. We, we stir our hearts again in you. Let faith arise. Let faith arise, Lord God. You've not called your church to be powerless, to be apathetic to talk about what we did one day back then, Lord God. You've called your church to seek you, to pursue you, to be filled with the power from on high. To go into all our worlds and preach the gospel. That you said that greater works than you that we would do in your name. But you told us to wait for Holy Spirit. So this morning we wait. We repent, Lord God, of not seeking after your face. We, we, we repent, Lord God, of apathy after you. We, we repent of just trying to do things in our own strength, Lord God. We love you, but we're, we're not enough. We're not even close to being enough. So desperately we do we need you, Holy Spirit, to outwork your fruit in our lives. 
as you're wanting to distribute giftings upon your church. Holy Spirit, we need you. We're so thankful that there was a day that you baptized us, that you filled us. We're so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you did that. But we need you today. Let your fire fall. I pray that right now that you'd stir hearts, awaken hearts, the dare to dream again, that you've placed within them, Lord, treasure. You put treasure, treasure, treasure in earthen vessels, Lord God. I pray that you would stir that treasure up inside of the heart of every believer, that we would begin to step out in faith, that we begin to dream, that we begin, Lord God, again to let our faith be stirred up, that you said that you would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask, dare dream or think. So we pray, Lord God, we pray for the crippled in our life. We pray for a crippled world. We expect, Lord God, that you could do wonderful things through a church that's filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, come. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. We wait on you. you're here in this place this morning and you've never been prayed for, you've never asked, you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, this morning we want to pray for you. I just invite you right now, just come right down the front. We want to lay hands on you that you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If there's anybody here today that you're, you're a believer, you've been saved and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to say, God, I want to surrender my life to you. I want to be filled with the power of heaven power, the person and the presence of Holy Spirit. Don't let, don't let fear hold you back. Don't be embarrassed this morning. If you're here today and you say, Mike, that's me. We just want to pray for you. Just want to see Holy Spirit fill you. Holy Spirit set you free. Holy Spirit empower you. Father God, we thank you that you would stir in your hearts, your church's hearts, a desire to seek you. You're not found by the casual observer. You're found by the seeker. You're found by those who hunger and thirst. Those who hunger and thirst, they, those people, those people right there, it's those that will be filled. It's it's those who who, who knock, who, who ask, who seek. It's those who wait upon your presence, Holy Spirit. It's those that are filled. You don't disqualify us, God, but we can disqualify ourselves. So this morning, Lord God, we say, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill your church afresh. I I pray, Lord God, for each and every single person here. That's here today, each and every single person that calls this place home, that you do a great work in them that doesn't stop as this meeting ends in moments time. I, I pray that you would ruin our, our, our prayer time, you would ruin our week, that you would cause an unrest inside of us, that you'd not leave us alone, that, that there would be a bubble. You said out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water, that there would be the springing forth of life in our lives as we would dare to believe that as we would pray for the sick, they would be healed as as we would pray for our loved ones that they would turn and come to a saving knowledge of the Lord that as we believe that our households would be saved as as we would extend our hands out to the crippled in our worlds that they would be healed and stand to their feet Holy Spirit let this not be a church of good intention Let us not be a church of good intention. Let us be a church that's filled with the power, the person and the presence of Holy Spirit. To hunger, to seek, to pursue you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said...
Amen. Come on, lift your voice this morning. Let's give God a hand of praise. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this week's message. If we can help you in any way, please get in touch with us via the web at caloundra.churchontherise.org.au.